What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another official review for you guys today. Chelsea 1, Krasnodar 1. What an entertaining end-to-end -end example of an amazing football match and I couldn't even say that with a straight face because it was a massive drag. Especially with the other Champions League games going on today. You could be forgiven for not giving two shits about this game. And I wouldn't blame you if you did. Even on my watch along, I had the Manchester United game on another tab. And that one was ten times more entertaining. But we already knew this game didn't mean anything to us. This game actually meant more to Krasnodar than it did to us. And even though this game actually didn't matter with the way Rennes played. They've qualified for the Europa League. So there was a little bit going into this game. But... We're going to delve deeply into this game later on in the review, but before I start, as per usual, if you guys haven't done so already, hit that like button, press the subscribe button, smash that bell notification button as well, and let's go straight into Chelsea 1, Krasnodar 1. Chelsea 1, Krasnodar 1. Now, going into this game, we, like we already said, we knew we were going in as group winners, and whatever happened with this result, we were not dropping lower than first place, so Frank Lampard was perfectly happy to make rotations and with a massive Christmas period coming ahead with a lot of games coming in the next two or three weeks it made sense that there was going to be plenty of rotations for this game and there was uh, it was a complete change again to the back four and the goalkeeper this time as Kepa returned to starting 11 for the first time since that fateful Southampton 3-3 draw which again until today was I think the last time we had the score draw I think which I mean, it's just another damning stat, but I'm really trying not to be too negative coming out of this game. Back fours changed as well as for Laqueta, Christensen, Rudiger, and Emerson all returned back to the starting lineup. There was also a return for Xavi himself, Billy Gilmore, or the second coming of him, which we are going to talk about later. But what a saucy performance by this guy. And we know injuries aren't holding him back, so I'm happy with his performance. I'm going to talk about that later. Jorginho and Kovacic also came into the midfield. Tino Andrin made his debut as well. Well, and Tammy Abraham and Kai Havertz completed the lineup, and it was a slow Chelsea side. Hell, I mean, the game dragged at the start, and if you say the start as well, you could say the start and the end because towards the end, we knew draw was happy for us, we didn't care too much as long as we didn't lose, it was fine. And we knew it was going to be this way. It was like watching paint dry for the longest. But then Krasnodar had a breakaway and Kepa tax, as per usual, came into effect. Would you say it's a Kepa error that led to the goal? No, but I would say it's another one of those saves that Edouard Mendy could have got to. Kepa just couldn't reach it. And it was near post as well. I just looked down and was like, for goodness sakes. Because I, I tried to come into this game positive. I didn't want to go there and just be like, oh, we got Kepa, we're going to lose. There's no point even going into a football game in a mood like that, especially when it's the team that you support. you got to back the 11 players that are on the pitch while they're playing. Whether you like it or not, you got to do it. This game, though, it is just another damning factor with Kepa, and I was really hoping he would play well, because if he did have a good game, we could try loan him out to a club that could give him a bit of decent game time, have him go build his confidence, then maybe come back and we can sell him off for a semi-decent fee, because we know half the reason why we couldn't sell Kepa was that we were trying to recoup as much as we could of that 72 million transfer fee, which is like... Like, we had balls and we were hella confident that summer window, but I don't know what kind of confidence we were going in thinking we were going to get at least half of the money back for Kepa. But other than that, it was just first goal was just led to Kepa tax. It was a good breakaway. Maybe Christensen could have gone in the shot, could have gone in the way of the shot and blocked it as well. But the goalkeeper could have reached that. He really could have. There, there was some positivity, though. Billy Gilmore was excellent. I genuinely think he has the best passing technique of any Chelsea player on the pitch. And like I said last season, Billy Gilmore's injury has kept Jorginho at Chelsea and has saved his Chelsea career. I echo those words so much louder now because as much as I love Jorginho, it was another jarring performance for him. The guy just got bypassed. Walked past him like he was a man trying to bust train every single time it was a 1v1. And his athleticism is really letting him down. And I think that... Uh, that Billy Gilmore has over Jorginho because he has the same level of pass accuracy, if not even better. He's more aggressive, he's a lot more stronger on the ball, and he moves across the pitch a lot quicker, which is why he, he what was it 
The perfect way to describe it is that Billy Gilmore, in my opinion, is making Jorginho look a little bit obsolete. And I've been backing Jorginho for the longest. And this is the thing. Billy Gilmore on the eighth position at times was doing what Jorginho should have been doing in the number six position as well. And that's half the reason why they were even able to find space for the first goal because of how much space we had left open in the middle. But same way, I also don't think the mentality was there for a lot of players. I did feel disappointed by some of the fringe players today. I've spoken about Jorginho already. I don't think had a lot of the impact on this game. Um, he got the penalty at least, but that's literally it. You can shrug your shoulders at that. Tino Andrin looked very solid. I didn't really speak on him. I'm going to speak about the worst of players later. But I thought he looked very confident today. He didn't really shine or do anything amazing, but he looked confident. He did the basics right. Didn't have a disaster class for your first game in the Champions League. I thought it was a very solid performance for him and it's something to continue to build on. But like I said, some of the fringe players really did let themselves down. This is a great, another great opportunity to showcase why you should be starting against a tough Krasnodar side who have literally got third place, which is back to that point. I thought... Emerson, like, I've already said consistency is this guy's problem and just look at the performance today it was fucking dreadful, man. Crosses were dead. Uh, like, half the points, it looked like he was aiming for Fulham Football Club with half of those shots. Um, who else was poor? I thought, T Tammy Abraham. Tammy Abraham, I love the guy. And I'm not going to speak too much ill on him because... Uh, for another year or two, he's still young, I guess. But fucking hell, man. A disaster class in this sort of game. Like, the height, the heights are there and he's dropped down yet again. He's now definitely our third-choice striker by a mile. And I don't know. Is it a confidence thing? Does he, does he lose confidence when he sees other players performing better in his position? I don't know. But it feels like the same sort of thing where Giroud was firing on all cylinders last season. And Tammy Abraham just couldn't really do anything in front of goal, if we're being honest, unless it was handed a pretty easy chance. So I thought fringe players definitely let us down, and especially when the, the subs came on and we had Timo Werner and N'Golo Kante coming on, you see the level of switch up. It was mad. Like You could see the midfield was so much stronger as soon as we had N'Golo Kante back in the midfield. But other than that, it was the, the Jorginho penalty made it 1-1. Good pass from, uh, what was it, Mateo Kovacic to find Tammy Abraham, who got the penalty to make it 1-1. But other than that, Tammy Abraham, the ball just bounced off him for most of the game, if we're being honest. It was another game where he really just looked like a giraffe with some of the ball controls. And it, it wasn't good to see, especially against the level of opposition. And it, I'm, I'm going to drop it down to a bad few games, but we, we do need to see better from Tammy Abraham. But it's it's not too bad. We've got we've got another draw, I guess, that put, takes our unbeaten run to 17 games in the space of 90 minutes. Havertz looks a lot more fitter, and he looked pretty positive in that game as well. He was making a couple chances, didn't do too much wrong with the ball, and is coming back from self-isolation to full match fitness pretty well. Champions League debut as well for Andrin and Billy Gilmore, and Billy Gilmore looked excellent today. And Manchester United are lost, so they're out the Europa League as well. So we can't complain too much. I'm going to go straight into the player ratings now. We're going to start off in goal. Kepa gets a four for me for the goal. For the goal, i got to give him a four, sorry. It, other than that, it was a solid performance. Might have got a five. Made a nice save in the second half. I say nice, I mean nice by Kepa standards, nice. So he's going to get a four from me. As for Laqueta, I'm going to give a six, I think. He was good defensively and got nothing against his defensive play, but going forwards just didn't really look much. It looked like 1890 and Equator again. Christensen and Rudigo are both solid for me, so they both get sevens. They weren't really at fault for much in this game. And I thought Rudiger's long passes were also solid as well, so I'll shout that out. Emerson, that's a two, maybe. You're fucking dreadful, man. The only reason why he's still at Chelsea is because Marcus Alonso needs to get out the door quicker than he does. But Emerson, two. Like, it, after the Rens game, it was just up one step forward, two steps back. Billy Gilmore, nine. Man of the match, 89.2 pass accuracy. Three out of four completed long passes. Most of his successful dribbles were completed. Most ground jewels won as well. Like I already said, his passing technique is amazing. He just looks like an upgraded Jorginho at this age. He is a gem of a player. And just coming back from injury with his first star as well. And he's playing like that. Excellent performance today. Um, who else are we going to? Jorginho. Barely got into the game. And got beat most of the time. Left a lot of space exposed in the middle. So I'm going to give Jorginho a 4. 
Mateo Kovacic, I'll give a six. I thought he had another key pass that led to the goal, which is showing his, his improved impact in the final third. Good at dribbling at times, but also at times seemed a bit slow and lethargic. So we'll leave it at six. Tino Andrin, um, I'm going to give a seven. I think he did the basics very well, looked confident, and it was a solid first performance to build off. So he's going to get a six from me. No, did I say six or seven? I'm positive. I'll give him a seven. Tammy Abraham, I'll go four or three. I'll probably go three for Tammy Abraham. He, he wasn't good today. He really wasn't. The ball just kept bouncing off him. It was just rebounding off him all the time. Ball control really does need to improve from him. So I'm going to give him a three. Kai Havertz, um, six and a half, I think. He didn't have a bad performance. I don't want to hear anyone tell me he had a bad performance. I thought it was solid today. Other than that, yeah, I thought he had a couple key passes, but he didn't do much wrong. So I'm going to give him a six and a half. But that's the end of player ratings and the review for you guys today. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with any of my thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I will see you guys very soon. Take care and up the chills.